Is prednisone worse than Celsept or Imuran? I was asked this question by a prednisone warrior, so I'm going to read that prednisone warrior's question and then answer it. And before I move on, I want to make sure that you know that this is not medical advice. This is general advice about prednisone and these other medications, as I am the prednisone pharmacist, Dr. Megan. Okay, so the prednisone warrior asks, I have been on prednisone for five to six years for autoimmune hepatitis, currently 15 milligrams daily. I also have hereditary hemochromatosis. That is under control. However, I try to be very careful about any supplements and medications I take. My hepatologist wants me to consider tapering down the prednisone and taking Celsept or Imuran instead. For some reason, those two drugs make me more nervous than taking prednisone for the rest of my life. Is there anything in the zone that would be detrimental to the liver? And can you tell me whether prednisone is worse or not than Celsept or Imuran? Thank you. So let's talk about Celsept and Imuran versus prednisone. First of all, it's important that we clarify what exactly these are. So Celsept is the brand name for a really long and ugly name, mycophenolate mofetil. They often abbreviate it MMF. And then Imuran is also known as azathioprine or azathioprine, depending on who's pronouncing it. So let's talk about autoimmune hepatitis and whether these are good options for autoimmune hepatitis. Typically in the past, the only real option is to take prednisone or another steroid at super high doses for a really long time to get the autoimmune hepatitis attack to slow down and for your liver to be healthy. And that's not a great option for most people. Prednisone is a very harmful medication. And so doctors have tried to find alternatives that might work. And the usual alternative they go to is Imuran, which is azathioprine. And so here's some information about that medication. It can cause side effects, which are risk of bone marrow suppression and cytopenia, nausea, emesis, which is vomiting, drug-induced liver injury, which is rare, infection, pancreatitis, and malignancy, which could be cancer. So these all sound really scary and terrible until you find out that technology has recently progressed to the point where we can test your genes to see if you're likely to experience the worst side effects of this medication. That is super exciting. It's called pharmacogenomics. And so we can do a genetic test to test your DNA to see if you have a enzyme in your body that's not working the way it should that would lead you to have a higher risk for these terrible side effects of this medication. And so if you have been prescribed azathioprine, here's what you should do. So the enzyme is called thiopurine methyl transferase or TPMT. And it's necessary to break down the azathioprine and make sure that it's not going to build up toxic metabolites that can poison you and lead to these really horrible side effects. Basically, there are somewhere between 0.3 to 10% of the population who have really poor version of this enzyme because of their genetics. And so they just don't break those down. So what your doctor can order is called TPMT phenotype testing. There's other ways of testing for it, but that's the cheapest alternative that gives the best result. So then you can know, okay, is this actually a safe option for me? And the typical people who really do poorly with azathioprine tend to be African-American males. They tend to have the worst reactions. And so genetically, they seem to have a higher propensity of this enzyme than other people. So if you get that testing done, then you'll know whether it's a good option for you. Moving on to Celsept, which is mycophenolate mofetil. And what's exciting is recent research came out this year in May of 2024 with new evidence about this medication for autoimmune hepatitis. This trial tested 70 adults with autoimmune hepatitis and they tested whether prednisone plus Celsept or mycophenolate mofetil versus prednisone and azathioprine, which is the Imuran. They tested these against each other to see which one would work better and have fewer side effects. And this is what they found. Six months after treatment with a combination of prednisone and Celsept versus six months of a treatment of prednisone and Imuran showed remission rates of 56% for the Celsept 
versus 29% for the Imuran. So according to that alone, I would go for the Celsept. It is almost twice as effective as the Imuran. Then they tested the side effects and the rates of serious adverse effects in the Celsept group was zero. Rates of serious adverse effects in the Imuran group was 13%. And then drug discontinuation. That means somebody stopped taking the drug for any reason, whether it was for a side effect or anything else. And that was 5% in the Celsept group versus 26% in the Imuran group. So it seems that Celsept is a lot better tolerated, is less likely to be discontinued, and much more effective than Imuran. So this is the first study that has ever compared the two, and it was only 70 patients, but those results were statistically significant. So it's promising that Celsept could be steroid sparing is what they usually call it, making it so that you can take less prednisone dose than the Imuran, and ideally to get off the prednisone altogether. So if it were me, I would personally take Celsept instead of prednisone or Imuran if I have a choice and if it works like it did for these other people. And you might be wondering, well, what are the side effects of Celsept? And those could be bone marrow suppression, gastrointestinal symptoms, including abdominal pain, ileus, nausea, vomiting, and oral ulcerations. So if you don't get those gastrointestinal upset from the mycophenolate mofetil, cells out, then that would be the best option, I think. So definitely talk this over with your doctor. Again, this is not medical advice. This is just generally comparing prednisone, mycophenolate mofetil, which is Celsept, and azathioprine, which is Imuran, to see which one is best for autoimmune hepatitis in general, according to this study. Also, this prednisone warrior asked, is there anything in zone that would be detrimental to the liver? You might be wondering, what is this zone she's referring to? She's referring to neutronized zone. It's the first and only supplement for people on prednisone. And she's asking if any of the ingredients that are in here designed to counteract the side effects of prednisone are going to be detrimental to the liver. And I checked them up in natural medicines database to see if any of them should be harmful to the liver. And according to the doses that are in here, if you take two in the morning and two at bedtime, there's nothing in there that should be detrimental to the liver. Just make sure you don't overdose on anything from Tylenol to this, and you should be okay. And if you'd like to get Neutronize Zone for yourself, you just go to Neutronize.com and you can get the first and only supplement for people on prednisone. Signing off is Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. Mm -hmm.